Elsway Al good day and welcome to another career education class. I'm really grateful to be here with you on the traditional unceded ancestral Stolo territories of the Chilquiet, Palalt, and Samath peoples. Our topic today is resumes, and some of you did resumes with me last year, so some of this will be review. For some of you, this will be new. A resume is a self-marketing tool where you highlight your quality, skills, and experiences with the goal of obtaining a job interview. Resumes are a work in progress, something that you continually update as you finish school, change jobs, receive awards, and so forth. Even someone like myself has a resume that I'm constantly adding to and editing and revising for different purposes. It's usually used to apply for a job, but you could also use it to apply for volunteer opportunities, scholarships, and bursaries. There are certain rules for resumes, things that you should do and shouldn't do, and you may have heard these before. Just in case you don't remember them, we'll just take a quick look. So first of all, obviously you're going to be honest on your resume. You really need to make it perfect and have someone proofread it for spelling and grammatical errors. You need to use action words or verbs when you're describing skills and experiences. Words like coach, designed, built, organized are great. You need to include your contact information, specifically your name and your email always. As for your address and phone number, as things go more digital, sometimes these are included, sometimes these are not. So if you're applying in an online job board to someone you don't know, you might want to just stick to your name, city, and email address and not put in the more refined information because you don't really know who your resume is going to and how it's going to be distributed. You do use dates to show when you did things and you try to be fairly specific with the month and the year, not just a vague one year. You don't need to know the exact day that you started a job or ended a job, but the month and the year are important to include. And you do present specific accomplishments and achievements when describing your experiences. This includes everything. So if you got A honors or a citizenship award or a service award, these are all important things to include on it. If you have some kind of work safe or WMIS or food safe certification at your age, maybe it's a babysitting course that you did. Any of these certifications and achievements all are important to include. Some things not to do on a resume are as follows. You don't use paragraphs on resumes. You simply use bullets to highlight information. Never handwrite corrections on the final copy of your resume. Don't include personal information such as gender, religion, nationality, date of birth, height, and weight. You might wonder why you don't put your age on there. Well, age is something that you're protected from discrimination against by the Human Rights Code. The same with all of these other topics here, so that's why you don't include them. You don't include personal pronouns like I and me, and again, this is because we're bulleted and if we're describing experiences, we start them with the action verbs. You don't say I coached a grade eight basketball team, you would just say coached, for example. Of course, you do not fake any dates, job titles, or work responsibilities. If a prospective employer checks your references and finds out you lied, you will likely not be chosen for that job. Always proofread, proofread, proofread. Have several friends and adults proofread it as well. People that you know have some strong editing skills. One typo can land your resume in the garbage. And if you have two or more, chances of you landing a job interview really drop. So we're going to use a tool in my blueprint called the Resume Builder, which some of you already are familiar with. It allows you to really keep track of your experiences and achievements. It's easy to edit, add experiences, rearrange things. It's a wonderful tool, probably one of the best tools that exists inside my blueprint. And you can create multiple resumes. It's super easy to duplicate your resume if you want a couple of different styles of resumes that highlight different things depending on the purpose. It takes the formatting stress away. It really sets up a resume nicely with consistent formatting for headings and subheadings, bullets. It's all done for you. And it really breaks down the writing process to make it simple. It also has some great help options. 
You even have the options to download, print, or email your resume right out of My Blueprint. Let's take a look at the resume builder in My Blueprint. To find the resume builder inside My Blueprint, you go under the Work tab and select Resumes. A couple of things to note when you're in here working on your resume. There is a resume guide and a few examples so you can see what things look like. If you click on here, there's all kinds of information about what to include in your resume. And down here are some example resumes so you can see what it will look like and look at some examples of some of the types of language that you can use in yours. If you've never created a resume before using the My Blueprint tool, you would simply click on Create Resume. If you have a resume in there from a past year, you can duplicate it to use it again this year. I'm going to give it a new name and then I am ready to go. For each section, I can look at and edit as I need to. Clicking on the edit buttons in a section will allow me to update and change the information. When I look at my contact information, I want to make sure I've used a professional sounding email. I'm not going to have anything like hot lips at google.ca or I'm an avocado at yahoo.com. You can look over your resume and make sure you've capitalized the words like Chilliwack, capitalize the letters here, capitalize the letters here, then click on save. For your objective, if you know you're applying for a specific job or for a part-time job, then you can go into here and you can add an objective or if you already have one, you can edit it. I have to gain a part-time employment while attending high school. That's nice and generic. Perhaps you're looking for a summer job, then you can change this to reflect that. Click on save. To add work experience, it says I need to provide my company name, title, dates of employment, and description of specific tasks and responsibilities. If you're still working somewhere, you leave this blank and it will just put to present on your resume so you do not have to put in a date there if it's a job you're still working at. For adding job tasks and responsibilities, you click on the plus sign and consider what you did. Extracurricular, I can actually add here. I can add a description if I want. If you were a team captain or co-captain or anything like that, that's something really important that you can add. Now if I look here, these are not quite in the right order. You always want the most recent at the top. So this little plus sign I can take and I can drag and move things around. If you don't have a strong work history, your achievement section is pretty important. I'm going to take a look at what they suggest. I'm going to click on the Need Help button and it gives a whole bunch of ideas. Certifications, have you got anything new? Maybe you did a food safe course or got a refereeing ticket. Skills and abilities, if you don't have a clue what to put there, then you can go to Need Help or you can click on Samples and you can simply add. You want three to five, you do not want more than that. Pick the most important ones. Here I have two references. Here I've got reference name, their job title, their company name, and their contact phone number. Once I've got that all in, I can preview my resume to make sure there are no formatting issues or anything I need to change. I make sure that everything is in order from the most recent to the oldest in each section. Once I'm happy with my resume, I can click on Add to Portfolio and put it in this year's portfolio by clicking on the Add button. If you're ready to try to take your resume out of my blueprint and play around more with the formatting, perhaps you want to use different templates, maybe you're really tech savvy and you want to add some style to it. Again, your style should always be kept simple, but you would simply open your resume and you can click on Preview Resume and Export. You can export it as a Word document and then you can do whatever you want with it. If you did a resume last year, 
with us, then depending on who assessed your resume, you might be able to hop into your grade 10 portfolio and look at the feedback that was given. And again, some of you have really specific feedback in there. Some of you won't find this, but you might find yourself editing a resume instead of creating a new one. And you will look for the feedback that was given. And I've got an example on the screen from one student here where they needed to just put the capitals in their postal code and fix the way they wrote GW Graham secondary. So there might be suggestions put into your resume that you've already got that you need to fix before you start adding to and editing and revising your resume. As far as your references go, references are really key to proving that what you put on your resume is true. Before you add someone as a reference, you need to always ask them. There's nothing worse than getting a call from an employer as a reference and having nothing to say about them or not even knowing that you were there as a reference. Right? So students that have asked me to be a reference, I give them the contact information I want them to use. And if I get a phone call from someone, it doesn't surprise me because the student has talked to me about it. For myself, I have references on my resume. And if I'm applying for something, I actually contact my references and say, hey, I just applied for this. If you get a phone call, this is what's happening. Never use family members because they're not going to be considered a valid reference. Obviously, your family is going to be biased and will only say nice things about you. Often an employer will ask the reference, are you related to this person? And as soon as you say yes, the reference is useless. Make sure you include besides their name, their official title and relationship. For example, you could say uh, someone is a personal reference. It might be a soccer coach. It might be the owner of a place you worked. Once your resume is done, you're going to add it to your portfolio and you would choose to preview your resume and then you can add it to your portfolio and choose this year's portfolio. That way your teacher knows that it's been completed and submitted. That is when they see it. So it's really important to remember this step. You can also choose to export a copy to save and the basic and word choices give you a resume you can edit. For assessment, an excellent resume is clear and organized with thorough, thoughtful, bulleted details. It uses a range of active verbs. It includes a range of experiences and achievements. So hopefully you've been able to add some volunteer experience, some school involvements, community involvements. Maybe you've had work experience since we looked at these resumes last year. And it's gonna have no errors in grammar, mechanics, usage, spelling. You're going to meet expectations if it's clear and organized with bulleted details, includes a few experiences, skills, and achievements, and it's nearly perfect. And then developing is on the way to those targets. Now we want all of you to do a resume in my blueprint. Even if you've done one already somewhere else, we want you to do one in my blueprint. All right, that's it for this week. We'll see you next time.